Hey everyone, welcome back. Today's tutorial is a bit of a get ready with me, actually. I was headed to a Mac event, so perfect opportunity for something a bit editorial. We have clean, glossy skin, bold brows, a nude eye and a velvety matte lip. Also, a quick hair tutorial at the end purely for your entertainment. I hope you enjoy. Starting with a hydrating primer pretty much everywhere except the nose. This is the first step to glossy skin and it also provides a little bit of extra slip when we're blending our cream highlight and cream contour a little bit later on. For the nose, I prefer more of a smoothing primer because I am a human and I have pores. <laughs> this is the Hourglass Veil, you know I love it. Since we're going for that clean canvas look for the skin, I'm extending that concept to the eyes with an eye primer that has coverage, just to conceal any redness or veins that might detract. I am back to my trusty Urban Decay Naked Concealer. Not sure if I've ever discussed my concealer placement, you'll notice that I drag the product up the bridge of the nose. This is helpful if you have a lot of shadows around the tear duct like I do, or if your eyes are close set. And I also find, funnily enough, that it makes my nose bridge appear less prominent. Uh, I think it's because it creates the illusion of a flatter plane. For foundation, I'm going for my usual mix because it works. For this look, I will take foundation across the cheeks to soften a natural flush. I find that once that vampy lip goes on, it really highlights any redness on the face, which can just look a bit messy. So we're aiming for a very even complexion. Feel free to spot conceal at this stage if you desire. MAC cream color bases. These have been around for years, so you don't hear many people talking about them, but in my opinion, the best highlight if you're going for a glossy vibe. So patting the product on the cheekbones, the very tip of the nose and the cupid's bow. If your natural lip line is a bit blurry like mine is, it's a good idea to conceal the edges just so that later on your lip color can be as crisp as possible. Onto cream contour, which I'm mixing with some leftover foundation on the back of my hand just to dilute that color a bit. Focusing mainly on the cheekbones here, but you can absolutely take it to the temples and the jawline if you like. If you find that cream products are always shifting on your face, then try spraying your brush with a setting spray before blending. That should help a bit with longevity. When working with bigger face brushes, I find you often lose some precision. So taking a little concealer to sharpen the lower edge of that contour. I'm just pressing in here with my fingers. The effect is a little softer than with a brush. Maybe an unusual step, but I'm also taking that cream contour through the socket and sweeping towards the temple. Then I'll just take my face brush and blend until hazy. We don't want any distinct lines or placements here. Again, sweep a little concealer from the corner of the eye upwards, provides a little bit of a subtle eye lift and corrects any contour that maybe has traveled down too far. Bring some glossy highlights to the eyes with, again, the matte cream color base on the ball of the eyelid, around the tear duct, and I also added a touch to the brow bone. Now this product will definitely shift a bit on the eyes, so feel free to use a shimmery cream shadow instead. So although I want this look to be editorial, I also want to go out in public. So I will do a bit of precise powdering just on the hot spots, like uh, between the brows, under the eyes, around the crevice of the nose. I am dry as a bone, but if you are oily, then just powder all the areas that you would naturally develop excessive shine, because girl, you got that natural glow. Setting spray, absolute lifesaver if you want to rock that glossy skin in the real world. Uh, this one here is the Urban Decay All Nighter, one of my go-tos. I tend to whiz through the brows really quickly in my tutorials because I always assume that that's the boring bit to watch, but the brows are definitely a feature in this look. So here is my bold brow routine. We're starting with a brow pencil to strengthen the shape of the brow. If I'm going bold, I'll tend to spend more time extending the length of the brow, both on the tail side and the inner corner side. That's kind of what takes an everyday brow to a strong brow in my eyes. So now we have a good shape. Let's work on texture. 
If you have extended your brows well beyond the point where natural hair grows, brow pans are fabulous for adding in realistic hair texture. I'll also use a brow pen to create some bushy texture in the inner part of the brow, just using some vertical strokes. Third and final step, brush the hairs upwards with a brow gel or in my case, a brow pomade. I do a little bit of a bit of a comb over action here to hide any of my big bald spots. Give the lashes a really good curl. No falsies today, so I'm opting for a ton of mascara. This is the new Marc Jacobs mascara. It's very, very volumizing and can even be a little bit clumpy, but I think that this look suits an overloaded lash, so I'm rolling with it. Also going crazy on the bottom lashes too. If you can apply a liquid lipstick with ease straight from the applicator, then hats off to you. I actually find it really tricky. My lip line is always wonky and then I keep trying to correct it and then I'm the joker, it's all over. So my solution, first sort out the shape of the lips with a lip liner. Now you got that down pat, the liquid lipstick bit is easy. Just color in the existing shape. This is Jeffree Star Unicorn Blood. Love this formula because it doesn't go crusty on my lips and love him because he's awesome. And then just to keep it real, I spent about 10 minutes really carefully correcting the lip edge with concealer. Here is some footage of my forehead to prove it. Welcome to another episode of Karima Can't Do Hair But Tries Very Very Hard. We're going for a super sleek high ponytail. So the first step is straighten your hair, unless you have perfectly straight glossy hair, in which case I'm jealous. Now Fashion Week taught me that the key to a perfect editorial ponytail is a string and four hair stylists, okay? So you got that on hand because I don't. Here is another alternative courtesy of Dana Lambert Hair. You should check her out on Instagram. She's an amazing hairstylist. So first flip your head over and using a teasing comb, smooth the hair as best as you can and tie it in a high ponytail. This footage is absolute rubbish, I know. Uh, the hair YouTubers out there are thinking to themselves like, mate, what are you doing? <laughs> Honestly, truthful answer, I have no idea. Okay, so now spray the scalp with some hairspray and again, take that teasing comb and thoroughly comb back any baby hairs and lumpy bits. You'll start to notice that there's this hair bulking up at the base of the ponytail. So now you think you're done, but wait, there's more. Release the ponytail and comb all the hair back again, tie it up again, rinse and repeat. So ideally you wanna do this process about three or four times and each time your ponytail will be sleeker and less bumpy. I stopped at two rounds because honestly that was just all the hair that I could tolerate for one day. Ponytails are serious business. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This look is equally awesome with a hot pink lip, an orange lip, a purple lip, that would be epic, any bold color. I respond to so many comments in the comment section if you didn't already know. So let's go chat there. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will speak to you all very soon. Bye bye.